Hello, everyone. Welcome to our October edition of the PSR podcast, Season 3, uh, Episode 10. Our special guest today is Rubentis. Hello, hello. Welcome. Hello. Uh, and we have three of our usual hosts. We have Iron. Hello. Jordan. Hello. And we have Tucker. Yeah. Um, Etiquette is not here with us today. He's busy. Um, also, we're doing this at a bit of a different time, simply because Iron has only about an hour to spend here today. Um, and because of that, we are going to do a little bit of a different order. We're going to start with the noted ones first, and then we'll move on to our focus topic after a break. So stick around for that. Um, and yeah, uh, that's how this podcast is going to go down. Um, Aaron, if you want to talk about just some of the general stuff that's happened. Yeah, for sure. So kind of three things to kind of kick things off to talk about. Um, as many of you know, the uh, the DLC, the first part of the DLC for Scarlet and Violet has released uh, the Teal Mask. There's been a lot of really exciting activity there. We'll talk a bit more about it later. Um, but um, there's a new leaderboard set up for that. Um, there is a glitch category, but as far as we know, there probably won't be any glitches unless something is found. But there's been lots of uh, really exciting stuff happening there, so stay tuned for, for that. Um, and we have, all, of course, the Japanese uh, leaderboard as well, uh, in addition to the English. Um, uh, the next thing is uh, Detective Pikachu Returns is, is now released, so I assume there will be uh, speedruns for that, if not haven't been done already. I, did, I completely didn't realize this was even out, but... Yeah, yeah it's the sequel it, to the 3DS game. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually looking on the, the Pokemon, but I don't think it's actually under the main Pokemon thing specifically for the original oh, game. Oh, okay. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, it came out yesterday. I think the game it literally came out yesterday, yeah. I believe. So oh, okay, so we'll we might see some activity there. Uh, yeah, maybe next month, depending on how good of a speedrun it is. And the third uh, the third thing is kind of what what's going to kind of form sort of a lot of what's happened in the in the Gen 1 side of the noted runs coming up is we had a really exciting um, sort of break the record, almost break the record style event. Um, Barrier Blitz kind of thing for Red Classic. Uh, super, super exciting. We had a lot of uh, great competition. As far as I know, there were, was it two weeks or three weeks worth of, of runs? Was, and then It was uh, two weeks of qualifiers and then yes. the finale, so three weeks of runs. Yeah, so as far as I know, anybody could do do runs for the first two weeks, and then the top qualifiers, the top eight, I think, would qualify for the final weekend, uh, which was uh, this pat one week ago, actually. So uh, that was a really, really uh, exciting event, and we'll kind of uh, our first noted run of the day. We'll, uh, we'll we'll talk about a run that was in that event, actually. Yeah, uh, we can go right into it. Um, as we said, race to the red race to the top classic event. Had a pretty great showing. Uh, one of the best showings here is literally the world record that we saw on day one of the finale of uh, week three. Um, this is Pokey Guy. Uh, yes, Pokey Guy. He's technically retired, but he he uh, had the time to come back and do a little bit of Red Classic on the weekends uh, for this event, and um, he got a 155.56, which is about a uh, 35 second cut on the world record by Exarion. Um, this run was not the first time that he was on world record pace in Classic. Uh, the week prior in the event, he had a run that was a little better pace than this, but uh, unfortunately died to Lance. Um, that would have gone like a lower 155. Uh, but yeah, uh, Pokey Guy. Just like a really solid star to a great uh, Mount Moon. Um, I, I want to say like five encounters, and so I was getting a Paris. Oh, yeah, that's a huge improvement. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like the world record had a lot of time save on Mount Moon. Uh, the, the, the way that classic works is uh, as compared to glitchless, where you are manipulating through Mount Moon, you can't use any sort of manipulations in the game. So relying on strategies such as like D sum. Uh, to get a good Nidoran, which Pokey Guy got, I believe, a level four in the first ball, which is ideal. 
Um, he also has a very good Nidoran, end, as you can see, 15 attack, 15 speed. Uh, zero special, which is okay uh, once you get past, you know, some of the parts. Um, so yeah, good Nido, good start, like good moon time. It's a, just a good formula to get a run like this. Um, you have the option to skip so far even with a pace like this, but you have to still do it. And uh, he he does hover around like just under a minute under world record in this run. But um, ultimately, he loses a bit of time here. Uh, this Lance fight and the Agatha fight that you just saw kind of play into each other, where um, Pokey Guy gets he 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 doesn't yeah he 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 gets he gets Hydro Pump and he gets it to hit, so he gets Red Bar for this fight. But however, however, uh, oh. since he has zero special, he doesn't get the Dragonair range. And this causes him to lose the badge boost um, on his on his new king. And what this matters for in this fight is the Aerodactyl at the end. It makes it so that it's, a, it's only a 25% range. And if he misses that range, then he dies. Um, what Pokey Guy was recommended to do, by the way, he gets a range obviously because the run finished. Um, what Pokey Guy was recommended to do was to X speed another time but because that would uh apply the badge boost again and make the range favorable if not guaranteed i'm not sure like but on the I'm second not... dragon air then yeah yeah but um didn't do that yeah, i guess uh, it's a pretty unusual situation yes it's quite unusual <laughs> but it paid off in the end um didn't lose a run even though it probably wasn't the right play and uh yeah, he's he's able to finish out the run without getting beat by champ. A very good run. He he won the event with this run um, pretty handily on day one. Nobody had any expectations to be beating this run for the rest of the weekend, um, which is a little bit of a bummer. People were pretty much competing for second and third at that point. Um, but yeah, a lot of a lot of money was won with this run right here. Yeah between the the prize pool for the classic uh race to the top event which was about like a thousand or so for first place and then also the existing world record uh bounties for red classic as well which yeah. is about twenty five hundred dollar bounty yeah. oh my god 500. so uh -huh. at least thirty five hundred dollars one i think that's a good enough reason to re on retire for three <laughs> weekends so very well done pokey guy well, I guess what? The bounty is till the end of the year, right? Yeah, technically you can still beat this round and also get yeah. money. People could come in take the 500 yeah. if they I think believe. One of the, I think one of the bounties was instant payout, so it's just like, you know. So if someone else yeah. beats it, they get it. The person yeah, who's else, doing yeah. the bounty has to pay out another 25. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I'm done. All right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. We, are, we also have another classic run here. This one's by Ananen. Um, uh, 15700. This was second place at the time that he achieved this, but Pokey Guy beat him to the record, so this is now currently sitting at third. Um, the Needle King was a lever attack and one speed, so a lot worse than Pokey Guy's. Um, this results in him having to YOLO uh, Sabrina, or not have to, but he just he opted to yellow Sabrina because of his bad speed, and it worked out. Um, he also did a bit of a weird play where he didn't opt to do fly bar on a forty eight twenty six surge, which is a good time. Um, but he did opt to do self bar, and I'm assuming this means that this knows here that he got a really good e four. To clutch up the 15700. Um, that's very close to 156, which I'm sure that's what he wanted. But uh, you know, yeah, it's, it's still very strong showing by N and N. Uh, this did not happen during the event. This happened like during between the between the qualifying weekends, I think. 
but um yeah it's still a very good time Uh, and lastly for red, uh, this is not classic, this is just regular glitchless. Uh, this is Grogear with a third place run and did this in 145.11. Um, this run was essentially neck and neck pace with uh, his target splits which are for 144. But he opted to not do YOLO Lorelei and he, he was basically gambling on like a better E4 than target. But um, as you can see with that start of the Agatha fight, he got put to sleep, so it wasn't really that feasible from there, but still managed to finish out the run in normal fashion and clutch up a PB. Um, I, I do want to mention, though, that one of the paces that Grogear had before this run was um, about... Sub 144 30. So a very good run, like almost even world record pace, but not quite. Um, and the fashion that <laughs> run died was pretty incredible. Um, on the Bruno fight, you give Onyx one turn, and it usually goes for like a really weak move, like Rock Throw. Or Rage, I think. Or Rage, yeah, Rage. And uh, it's, it's just like really rare to see Slam. And also you had to get he had to get crit to die and that's exactly what happened um it's like two percent i believe so yeah it's just really unfortunate uh there was there was like even jokes about how like he was gonna have like the run of his life and it would die to something that he hasn't died before and that's exactly what happened with the onyx slime crit so Sometimes you don't want to wish that on yourself, but it, that's what happened. Yeah, Groger has been playing this category a lot. Seems like hours every single day. That's what it takes. Yeah. Uh, he's still on the grind. He's still trying to get that sub 145. Very dedicated to. Hopefully we'll see it next month for the podcast then. Would that, would that still be third place, or I don't know what the second place time is. But... Second place is Wayne, bro, with a 145.05, so yeah, okay. it would be second place. Okay. Yeah, because the guy has the ridiculous time in first place, but... Yeah. Yeah. Does that round it out for red, what do you say? That does round it out for red. Okay. Uh, here we have Wave Warrior. Uh, we move on to Gen 3 with Fire Red Leaf Green. Um, this is an E4 Round 2 run. Uh, a world record at 327.52. Um, Wave has really dedicated to himself to this category for a while. And uh, he got a really good run. Uh, this start E4 Round 1 time is a good metric to like encapsulate how good the run was. Like in its entirety and that's like kind of when the well, well it is when the catching variant starts that uh, stops so it was a 237 which is just like one of a kind um definitely the best run that anyone's had i think it's like better than the best run by 30 seconds uh here you see like like you got frozen by dugong's ice beam uh he's been having some foul luck with that recently but yeah, he, he had such a big lead that, like, this is fine. Like, <laughs> yeah, still, still a bit of 327. Um, if you look at his comparison against world record Pokey Guys run, um, you'll notice that he will lose about like a minute to Pokey Guy from like the start of E4 round one to the rest of the game simply because Pokey Guys run was like just that good from round one to end uh but yeah he, wave built like big enough lead so that it just like did not matter um yeah I, I believe this is like exactly the kind of run that he wanted so he said he missed yeah. four kicks on the bill split 
Yeah, four four kicks on the bell <laughs> split is quite oh. a bit. <laughs> yeah, he's been uh, he's been like going for any percent as well, and like I think his first day back or something, to any percent, he was on record pace. Yeah. And I think and it got trolled by Lorelai. Lorelai got, again. Yeah. yeah, frozen by Ice Cream three <laughs> times in a row. Yeah. <laughs> Very ridiculous. But yeah, uh, with this run, Wave has sights on getting the Gen 3 glitchless world record sweep. Because now he has Sapphire Emerald and Fire Red round two. All he needs is Fire Red any percent to finish that off. And that's what he's doing right now. Pretty crazy. Yep. Yeah. Good player. Very good play. Alright, this is Dexy's Platinum Any% percent Glitchless uh, English World Record. This is in English. Did I, did I type BNG? I, I think I typed JPN by accident. Okay. Um, know, this whatever. is World Record by, I believe, three seconds. Um, what I've highlighted here is one of the most variant fights. Uh, he, he, he played uh, the Chimchar route, um, which is what World Record uses. Uh, th this fight is one of the most variant fights in the Chimchar route because Gligar can hit like screeches and Weasel also has Aqua Jet, which is, does a lot of damage. Um, but he got Screech Miss from Gligar and he got a random pursuit from Weasel. And he also gets the crit on Driftlin. So this fight went pretty much perfectly for him. And as a result of that, he didn't have to do any healing on the split and it just like kind of made the run what it was uh managed to get the world record from here um there has been just a few improvements on the the route itself mainly to do with the minute we did talk about this last month uh, dexy got a pb this 137 as you can see in this um, but just to remind people, it's just like about 15, 20 seconds or so improvement with the minip overall. Um, and money routing lets you save a bit of time in other places as well. Yeah. Uh... I forgot this run even happened um, <laughs> before we did this, but yeah, this is Worcester's uh, So Silver Glitchless World Record speed run of 3.30.30. This is a one second world record. Um, this run was something else. As you can see, he is a minute behind. Uh, he has been a minute behind for the entirety of Kanto, but his PB at, uh, at this, well, when he was doing this run, his PB had about a minute of time loss on the red fight and he needs a gold here um the the weird part about this run is that worcester routed uh, a very like complex route that gets a raikou that we didn't even know that you could really get and that raikou just so happens to have a much safer and faster red fight because it's mild nature and it f makes the ai do uh, more fa more favorable things for Raikou, just to put it simply. Um, but he does not even get the Raikou that he was routing for. Uh, he had to use the quote unquote Raikou one, the regular Raikou that we used to use, um, just because like the frame that you have to get for Raikou zero, which is the newer good Raikou. Um, it is so low that he needs to advance RNG so little, like meticulously, like so little in order to get Raikou zero, and he was not able to do that in this run. So he basically just like played out a, a worse uh, glitchless run and managed to come back just by getting his best red yet. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty silly that this run made it all the way and got a world record, even if it's just by a second. Uh, 
doesn't really show up worse as free to labors either. No, it, I'm it sure was, he wasn't happy with it. That. It was one of his like main goals, you know, to get Raikou Zero and throw that off and PB with that. Get at 329, yeah. but that has to wait for now. Yeah, yeah. He's been on this grind for so long, like almost a full year just on this category. With a yeah. small break doing like Fire Leaf Green Trainer Tower. Yeah, definitely pushing the limits of HGSS. Yeah, he has like some crazy new optimizations that I don't know if anyone's ever gonna do. Yeah, like, like I don't know if anyone is ever gonna get Raikou Zero outside of him. Uh, what do you need to do to get Raikou Zero then? Basically, he had to reroute the entire beginning, or basically yeah. after yeah, after getting. Uh, after beating rival one, he rerouted the manip so you advance RNG less. Right. And uh, yeah, you also have some variance with the, the pseudo widow encounter because of the way the RNG advances on an encounter. It depends on where the RNG is, and yeah, so the pseudo widow can jump a lot or or a little. So you have to get cooperative pseudo widow RNG as well in order to have a chance to get the lower Raikou. Yeah. And in order to do all of this, you really need to like keep Manip basically until Sudowoodo, which is like you have to do Manip through Goldenrod with the bike, through a lot of um, load lines that are really pesky. Uh, and also like keep track of like if you're getting on the bike fast enough, if you're opening the bag fast enough, like these all have to be like really well executed and fast like this is uh when when we say that we're pushing the limits of hcss this is what we're talking about because it's uh you basically have to keep it for even longer and yeah and if you go to i think if you go to faulkner in this run i think you should take a look at that fight i think it was this run uh that's around at, at like 22 i know this run had like a decent start okay. up until like whitney whitney wasn't great but like, it, it was just the mid-game where, like, he lost most of his time. Like, Jasmine wasn't good. Guilteon wasn't good. E4 wasn't good. Yeah. So like, all, all that, yeah. basically, was where he lost the time. Yeah, Worcester has been also working on Battle Manip. Like, basically, he's looking at every single fight that there is uh, that you can possibly hit. And he's looking at this... This is an identifier, so he gets a max roll burn, which there's not a lot of fights where that happens, so he knows. Max roll burn and yeah. then tackle dodge. I mean, oh, it, yeah. You have to get, <laughs> like, a get lot more. of, um, yeah. you have to know, like, uh, a lot of, like, unique fights. So, like, you know, tackle, miss, you can expect, like, 5% of the time, so that, that kind of, like, gives away what that seat is that he hits. And, uh... Yeah. He's just you have like 60, 60 battles a second. Yeah, he's just routed this in an emulator and just like knows what to do to get the fastest fights. Like, this has been done for like a couple of months now, but yeah, it's it's just present. Boom. All these all these PVs <laughs> like don't even oh don't even have to talk about it. Yeah, twenty two Faulkner is absolutely insane. Oh, yeah, it wasn't even his first twenty two. Well, no, yeah, <laughs> he's. I think he's hit this fight, this exact fight before. Yep, 22 is possible now, I guess. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and he also did the same for Whitney. Because you keep Manip all the way, you can realistically Manip Whitney as well. And Whitney has a really bad win rate in this route. Yeah. But with Manip, you can expect a very, very good win, win rate. Where before we Manip this fight, I think I lost around half my runs there. Yeah, the, the Whitney fight, if you're playing, like, optimally, like, you're taking, like, 50-50 risks, and, like, you have to get, uh, you have to get two coin flips, usually, if you get attracted, and that even that is arranged, like, it's, it, it, a lot, it, the, the identifiers do a lot to get runs past Whitney, and it shows, because Worcester is, like, almost always on a Raikou run now, like, yeah, because of these identifiers. Yeah, with I Whitney, I think I think he's routed like over a thousand fights. Yeah, because of the move metronome, you know, you get a lot of unique identifiers. Yeah, metronome is just the 
the godsend of identifying fights. Cool. Yeah. Uh, this is oh, this is me. Uh, my black second place run. Um, it's at three eleven twenty three. In all honesty, this run, uh, it what I didn't feel great about it at the time because like there's a lot of separation between me and Skoa for his record, and I also believe now that I can like take this way lower. Um, but this was like second it is second place right now because um well, the only people who have done plasma skips and pb with it is me and skoa but yeah what i've highlighted here is a pretty bad mistake by me um that costed about like 30 40 seconds so this run like was high 310 pace but i accidentally used the wrong move on this sock right here um, the sock has Karate Chop, it doesn't kill you unless it gets a crit, which is 1 and 8 with Karate Chop. Um, I get an unlucky crit there, that's not the misplay, but the misplay is right here. I'm, I sh because the sock has Sturdy, you have to basically 2 hit it, and you're not supposed to work up here. You're supposed to crunch, I just forgot which move slot it was for a split second, and that's what costed me this easily preventable death. Um, it's not the end of the world because this fight you're prepared to die because you can die if throw just picks a uh, storm throw or sock crits you with a uh, karate chop but yeah it's yeah, that was a very preventable death and kind of beat myself up for this for like the rest of the run because you mean the pit of just... wasn't meant to solo sock at that point yeah the <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, oh you said pit of. I, I thought you said sound. But... <laughs> no, pit of. Yeah, the, the pit of is fine. You, you know, just throw it out there. Yeah, we'll take it on. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I think it's... I think that run will be beaten soon by me because I feel much better That's... about my abilities. But uh, yeah, this last run right here is a Dexy's. Uh, Japanese world record in black um, at 3.13.58 I'm not sure what time this translates to in English. It's about the same and then like you take away like two and a, two minutes 50 seconds for credits and you add on 13 seconds for like the different start timing but the thing about Gen 5 is that English text is faster than Japanese text. So Wait, English is faster. Of... Yeah, English is faster. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. It's because yeah. English prints two characters per frame and not... And Japanese is slower than that, it seems like. Uh. Yeah. And also, one thing that Dexy told me during this run is in Japanese only, in black, there's a, there's a the text box that shows up at the beginning of each fight was like, once the yeah, trainer wants to, to battle. You have to mash yeah. perfectly, like one frame, in order to clear that text box without any like lag. Yeah. So, so every time you're not frame perfect, you lose like a second. Yeah. That's oh. a, that's also present. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I don't really know what time this translates to in English. Uh I'm guessing like about the level of scores run. So three nine, maybe low three ten. Uh what I know is that it's satisfactory for Dexy. He thinks it's a good run, so Yeah, I, I think too. he didn't save like the full Plasma skip time over his old PB, but I think his old PB was really good as well. Like, Plasma skip in theory saves like 1 minute 50, and he wasn't that far ahead of his old PB, but pretty close. Yeah, his Plasma skip minute is actually like really fast. Like, he does it on yeah. bike and, you know. Yeah, he practiced I mean, it a bit. I actually made the Plasma skip for Dexy. It's actually really, really easy to make once you know what you're what you're doing. Yeah, like, and Dexy gave me a very small list of seeds because he really wanted. You could see a bit earlier in this in this video that he didn't have snow at the end of uh, or after Bryson's gym, which is which I haven't seen before, but that apparently saves a few seconds because you don't yeah. have to slide on the ice. Yeah, that so like the movement itself is like about ten seconds or so faster. But you have to repel because you can now get encounters on the water, and you can also 
you also have to look at like the season change from yeah. winter to spring so that's all totals to about like five seconds of time save total yeah Dexy so... gave me a very small list of seeds and i was really surprised that one of them worked for a plasma skip yeah uh i he was really do... lucky with that i do think i'm gonna make a new seed so that i can get this time save it's it's five seconds for a little uh, for a bit of work but you know it's obviously worth it every five seconds other than yeah. all the work you have to put in to do it. All the work. You know. <laughs> That's <laughs> yeah. not in the room. <laughs> IRL time loss for in the yeah. time save. Yeah. That that rounds out all the DS stuff. Um yeah. 3DS, you all did nothing, apparently. So <laughs> go straight onto Switch. Um Mage. Iron, did you ever do any percent with DLC? I have it, I would like to. Um, Exploud is really interesting. I was looking yeah. at its moveset. It gets... I don't know what level it is at this point. 71? Okay. So it gets Boom Burst at 72, which is super busted. Um, it's like 140 base power. It's like a move that Toxtricity can really benefit from because of its ability. Uh, which is Punk Rock, which boosts sound-based moves by 30%. So, obviously, I don't think Exploud ha would have that, but it's still a super strong move. Uh, yeah, I'm not too sure. Actually, I mean, you could, you might be able to slightly check. I don't know if he checks stats or anything with Exploud at any point. It oh, move two to stuff, maybe around here. Wait, one bit earlier. This is, this is the... Oh, uh, uh, Scrappy. Okay, so yeah, I'm interested in what because it has a lot of it gets a lot of spe uh, special attacks that are stab, but also like a wide range of physical like mm. move coverage type uh, moves like crunch the the f elemental fangs. I don't think it. It looks like he's going, or well, they're going with a special explode. Uh, that's a. It good has it that. has the same attack and special attack. So yeah, but its Did stats aren't particularly impressive <laughs> it's got like 90s and not low 90s in attack 68 speed but i guess you're running a super high level mon so yeah and it gavin really makes a good point overall skips move selection apparently um i guess also yeah. scrappy um i don't think it would come up too often but does that also prevent the intimidate text from coming up that's only in gen 9 is that only gen 9 yeah ah fair enough then but that's a hidden ability. It it gets hit, it gets scrappy in this. Oh no! Something says Gen Eight. Yeah, it's a Gen Eight thing. But oh, I, I, mean, oh, I guess I mean, more, does this okay. does it still come up with the text for Intimidate? I guess because that's the time loss. Half the time loss. It's just that yeah. text loss. Yeah, <laughs> that's up. a good point. But I I could find, but I can't think. Actually, no, I'm I've I've got to check now. I'm pretty sure peers, right? Ah, okay. I think the text box does come up anyway. So wait, he has scrap. They have scrappy in this, right? Yeah, this is scrappy. But yeah, so intimidate procs. Oh, okay. but the attack, the attack doesn't increase, uh, decrease. Sorry, because of the nature, but it still gives the text box, which is still not ideal. But I guess yeah, okay. you're not having to do extra setup at certain points, which is good. Okay. The um, reason I um, asked about scrappy is because it's it's actually a hidden ability on Exploud, so I guess the Dynamax mons can get hidden abilities. Is I that... think. I think most of them have hidden abilities. If oh, I correctly. Okay. I think. Yeah, I haven't looked into too deep into the, the the Dynamax adventures, but yeah, that would make sense. Yeah. But yeah, Xbox, a very unique Pokemon to use. Um, you wouldn't think it'd get a time this quick, but here we are. Um, <laughs> I think the Sword World Records still a. Uh, a good bit better, maybe like a, a minute and a half or something. I don't remember what whom's time is. Um, but granted, you also sword saves a tiny bit of time just because of how the gyms work and like and all that jazz. Um, but yeah, it's not the only Switch world record. Uh, T Pat, who T Pat, if you ever watch this, please upload the video. Please upload it. Submit the yeah. run. <laughs> Don't this, uh, forget. Do not forget about this. <laughs> yeah, this is this is a really good run. Uh, I watched a bit of it. I think I think Spider DM'd me when 
he said t pad has xl candy so um you go obviously like with a lot of work done by spider um we figured out that going into the crown tundra to get experience candies is just not only faster but it's much more consistent than just doing the the blissy grind and the low level sobble drizzle fights in in the isle of armor so it's so much better um there is a five percent chance to get an experience extra large candy in the by the mayor's house um pretty much to get record you have to get that um you cannot i don't believe it's possible to get record without getting that uh, xl candy so um I think the top two or three times now have it. Uh, Spider, T-Pat, I think, I think Zapotic got it as well. Uh, I don't think you, ha you do not. I know you don't have it. No, either. I go Lodge. Yeah, same with me. Um, so yeah, you, it just saves so much time. You skip, the, the biggest time save is you skip uh, going to one of the Vistas or the Views with Kupfu. And that just is movement time that you save. And also the fights are a bit faster because you're level 29 for the uh for the, for the tower fights which is huge yeah also something important to know because uh, you mentioned the xl candy which is obviously like big time say it gets three medium candies prior which you can use all them and sobble and that also saves a lot of time like yes. um for this clara fight coming up for example it's all skip text from clara and you get a one shot guaranteed on the slowpoke um, it makes the most yep. of the fight a lot safer and quicker as well. Like, yeah, just really, really good candy setup. Like, I, 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 I thought before this run that it would be possible to get a large like world record with large. You need a really, really good run. But I think at this point you do now. You just need that yeah. XL candy, and you probably need some good candies as well for so, uh, for Sobble. I think probably at least. Um, Oh, I, like ideally two mediums and a extra small or small. I think it is. I think I think small because that just gets you to those yeah. one shots for uh, sobble and for mustard as well. So yeah, yeah, two mediums definitely is huge. One is really not good, but, but yeah. So really good run. Well done, T Pat. Uh, one of the most difficult runs at least. Oh, as I, I will say one of the most difficult runs for Soul Shield to beat, and then I just remember that it's just, there is a lot of <laughs> good runs that are difficult to beat for this game now, just because of how it is now. But anyway, um, there's also Don't Get Urshifu, World Record, by uh, Poke Hot Yan, who, uh, again, really good candies, like two medium candies before the cutscene. Uh, you don't need as many candies for this version of the run, um, or at the very least. If you can avoid the cutscene, that'll save enough time. It does get the encounter here though, which is a bit slow. Um, kind of scary too, because these pokes are very high level. <laughs> yeah. Which. That's. Oh, well, I guess dies as well, but I yeah, guess yeah, granted, if you die, you go back to the the station anyway. So it's it's not the end slower. of the world. Yeah. Yeah. The um. Yeah, two can't two mediums here is very very good for don't get just because you have much better ranges on a lot of the fights in my run which is now i think fifth <laughs> in don't get which is wild mm. um or maybe i'm still i still have a pokeball on the leaderboard i don't remember i know i lost my pokeball once t-pack got record in, in get but yeah i got two mediums in my run it was just so much I, I routed it out it's so much better at least i know one for shield for sure but for sword it is it's probably beneficial as well yeah uh yeah, Spider. Okay, yeah. two means like you for because so well, that the small candy does give you a couple of extra things. I don't remember what the off the top of my head. But I yeah, remember I, when I, I, I looked I, I into it. That. I remember I looked into it. It was, I think, I think it was just it was some like ranges because you just get a good level. Look, that might, it might be the difference for Dynamaxless, which actually I never checked. T Pat, if you're still here, did you get did you do Dynamaxless for the Orin? Um I, I forgot to check that, I'll be honest. Uh, in the meantime, though, ESP, I and you might know more about this than I do. Well, yeah, I guess, I guess with regards to, quick, quickly, with regards to Dynamax list, you can't do that oh. in Shield. You have to Dynamax because of oh. uh, Swoobat and its ability. So, Sword wins again. <laughs> oh, it's the, it's the better game. I've run both, I can say that. 
Anyway, yeah, let's uh, let's move on to uh, oh, yeah. the BDSP. I haven't really been following too much of the BDSP activity recently, but we have a couple records here, both on Japanese. Um, the first one is well, both well, actually we have records in both, and we we'll eat with each version. So the first one here is Brilliant Diamond uh, by Yoshida Shu, uh, three thirty six fifty six. This is actually faster than the sh the Shining Pearl one that's coming up, uh, despite this death to wake. Um, this fight is been kind of the crux of the routing and the running if you if you hit optionals um you get too high level for wake and then you can disobey <laughs> on his last pokemon or even potentially as gyarados if you uh if you get really unlucky so and there's also a damage range as well um i'm not sure what if if, if the japanese community does it differently here uh, but level 30 should be fine you don't want to hit 31 so yeah uh I think, because like, yeah, it showed the range earlier. There's also some Volkner stuff, which I had no clue which. Actually, I will take you to that Volkner bit, because you might have an idea. Uh, it seems like something dies, but I don't know why it dies. That makes sense. It doesn't help this in another language. Oh, Volkner. This is an interesting place to, to uh... To die. This fight doesn't seem too bad, but I guess if you get crit by the Raichu... It could be quite bad. Because it always it's, it's I guess it's faster. Seems to be going well right now. I've I haven't touched this in a while. I don't remember if I was using Palkia for this or if I was using Kadabra. It is faster to use Kadabra though. I'm I'm pretty sure actually I was using Kadabra until the Elite Four. Oh yeah, because yeah, right you. Kadabra meant to die though is the question. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> All right, I don't think so. I mean, you have Palkia in the back, or Dialga in this case, so. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure, like, there's. Yeah, I'd have to. I'd have to check if anyone in chat knows that. Yeah. This just has to like. Cause I'll. I'm pretty sure that it was something with Volkner, just based on the comment that they left uh, on SRC. But it could have also just been the general split. It could have just been something completely earlier on. Uh, within the split, but uh, yeah, take on to the the other run in the meantime because I think I think at this point it's plain yeah. sailing. Yeah, so we'll do that. Um, yes, this is Carolio with Shining Pearl glitchless, uh, any percent Japanese three twenty seven fifty nine. So a little about a minute slower than. Well, actually, no, never mind. This no. is. I, nine I, nine I, minutes I, faster. I, uh, it's ten minutes. Never mind. I, or nine minutes. Uh, it's nine minutes slower. Um, that's actually quite in, or nine minutes faster. So yeah, it's um, pretty clean run here. Uh, nothing too crazy went wrong. So pretty solid time. Yeah. Uh, I think. Yeah, I'm just when looking through it because. I, I always like for friends I have no clue about. I'll always look at the splits, and there just didn't seem to be any like massive bits of time lost throughout. So you, you you'll see like maybe like eleven. I don't know if my mouse shows up, but like eleven seconds for like a couple of splits here, fourteen seconds a little bit further down. But that could just be like a bit of variance, maybe like a turn. I don't know what. Yeah, um, the run is the run is pretty consistent yeah. generally because you have the fixed stats on the Kadabra. And then really it's just not hitting optionals. And there's certain ranges that pop up as well. And then things can go wrong on some fights like the uh the double fight on Spear Pillar. That that's always a fun one, so uh Toka Rubensis. Have you ever considered an BDSP? Or is that like the last thing you ever want to touch? Oh you have? Yeah. Um I completely I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean it wasn't Music a very on. Yeah, it was, it was a music on run. It's like 15 minutes worse than like Etiquette's uh, record. I, I just like, I didn't have fun with it. I thought it would be fun. It was like a decent bit of fun until like I lost some runs to like late game. So the, that was, was your like, mistake. Yeah, you did music on. That's the yeah, mistake. I did music on. I disagree yeah. with the whole music off thing. Uh, music off's the much better version. I say as I have done one run in Spanish. <laughs> I, mean, I, but, um, I, I like the music. 
So, yeah. yeah, fair. Yeah. Um, I guess actually one thing to mention uh, for Japanese, we didn't specify anything like music on or off because I believe they only run music on. Um, oh, I think that's a hard set rule. <laughs> so, um, Good for them. shame on them, in my opinion. Music off no. should be all <laughs> games should be music off. Wow, <laughs> that is a take. I I, well, I just I just don't listen to music like the game music when I play. So, one of Pokemon's best qualities, and you just. I think I will. Well, I, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny. I just like listening yeah, to my music. Across the board, across the board. All of our games have good music. And uh, I've uh, I've listened to it too much. <laughs> I'm sick of it. <laughs> it's all you at least. But anyway. Um, get on before I have pitched folks turning up at my house. Um, Elk. With a catch them all speedrun. Did you run this Tucker as well? <laughs> no. Yeah, fair. the only Switch games that I run are BDSP and Let's Go. Fair. Actually, I mean, did you run this? No, I play it casually. I, I wanted to, but it, at the point where I was thinking about it, it just looked so complicated. Yeah. And it looks like I definitely would like to try it, but yeah, it's 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 pretty insane. Hulk's the best in the business for sure he's been grinding a lot of the longer categories uh recently um he's been doing a lot of the catch them all uh, i think he's been doing japanese as well so um going for sub eight hours in in that he, he achieved it here um which is super awesome but yeah a lot of things need to go right <laughs> with this um, yeah so Which. Actually, um, he uh, he almost quit this run because he was waiting for some weather to change. But he just got some good spawns like I showed earlier. He got like a peat block very early on, which is what you need for Ursa Luna. Uh, the Ursa Luna that you're rising on does not count, I guess. Um, also, Crisis says he's already got some bait in Japanese, so yeah. he has them in both versions now. Which, again, just... Well done to Hulk for doing that. Um, yeah, I, I don't think there was much waiting around as well for the for the distortions, which helps a lot uh, for the uh, for time save because it's what, between five minutes and four. It uh, goes all the way up to fourteen minutes between them potentially. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I think the longest one was fifteen minutes if I remember correctly when I read the SRC comment. So. The platforming looks really fun to like get good at though. Oh yeah. I feel like Catch the Walls are more interesting run than any percent from what I hear. Mostly because any percent has a few sections where there's kind of nothing. Oh maybe I'm mixing it up with something else, I don't know. There's always a chance of mixing it up with something else. But this like Catch Mall does seem interesting. Yeah, Catch Mall runs are generally fun even though they are long. Hmm, yeah. Oh yeah, he had to idle in a battle with Burmy for 12 minutes in the room. Yeah, also high help. Congrats. Congrats on another world record in Legends Arceus. Um, yeah. I think at this point, I go on to Scarlet and Violet stuff, which I and carry. <laughs> oh, I see my least favorite pokemon on the screen it makes me sad no that this is a great uh great jap or is this jap this is that this is english uh any percent yeah, english this, list yeah with the ugly pink bird by carolio <laughs> um this is was i'm assuming this was done after the patch too which there's been some weird stuff we've seen with starfall bases specifically which is just which just provide a lot of time loss um oh is that actually one because like there is like that's one of the bigger areas of time loss in this was it was just during Starfield like the Starfall Street section there. And I have no yeah, idea like what happened. Two and a half minute like load time load screen for one of the bases. It's pretty brutal. That's people have been seeing. Oh, this is a uh, before patch apparently. Okay, yeah. So that so there was just time loss for some reason that I do not know. Yeah. It can be pretty uh inconsistent there, depending on how things go. 
with the yeah. uh, with the let's go sections. Although you are generally using a pretty high level mod for that, so it's not too bad compared to the actual Starfall Street single story run. Um, but pretty solid, just pretty solid run. Um, not a lot of mistakes here. Uh, it is a fairly consistent run, just in the sense that you're kind of getting a high level mod and sweeping a lot of fights. But uh, there's still a lot of execution in terms of collecting all, all the items you need in the overworld, which uh, which is definitely the crux of a lot of these these categories. Yeah. Is to actually figure out what works best. Um, but uh, we'll see how things go with future patches. Uh, any percent's kind of in a lull now since the patch dropped because it's just you're just losing time. Where have we seen that before? Yeah, this is, this is much more egregious than I think the <laughs> Sword and Shield. Is it actually? Because like, I haven't paid much attention to it. Well, it losing really two and bad. a half minutes to just nothing. Is oh, it's silly. like two. Oh, it's that bad. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh. Um. Yeah, well, I guess good job that Kara got this before the patch then. Because this is also yeah. apparently like the first world record in this category in nine months. Yeah. Oh, like since the, since yeah. 2022. Because uh, it was the 31st of December for Science Run. Yeah, that's pretty wild. There's been a yeah. lot of activity on the in the single stories, but yeah, it's just not so much 80%. in eighty percent. Yeah, eighty percent just yeah. has the, the the long, boring early pit early bit, uh, mm. and then the uh, the post the uh, the post like treasure hunt stuff is kind of interesting, but fairly fairly long as well. So. It's also just a long run. People, a lot of people don't like doing, don't have the time to invest to learn and run a long category. So that's kind of yeah. the reason why it's not seen as much activity. But we'll see how things go with the next bit of the DLC that drops uh, later, I guess, in the, in the next few months. Because that's going to likely require completion of the treasure hunt <laughs> in addition to the first part of the DLC. So that will be very interesting to see. Yeah. Uh, sticking with Caro though, it, this yep. has been Caro's month. Like, fair play to them. Yeah, three so. three runs uh, noted here. Uh, two of them, the second the second one in in Scarlet is uh, Path of Legends uh, record glitchless. Um, they use um, and so I guess uh, the previous record also by Crisis used Meow Scarada. This is. Um, a route which I assume requires a little bit of resetting for good stats at the beginning, but it's not nearly as strict as the uh, the English version because you have the school time. You can actually set your starter up in advance, and you you spend a lot of IRL time resetting for a uh, time save in the game, kind of like what Tucker was talking about earlier with with the uh, with the black run. Um, but the um, the issue here is obviously you can't reset for those really strict stats. So you, we, they do run a couple levels higher. I think uh, for for English we run fifty level fifty three, and for Japanese it's fifty five or fifty six. And Caro used fifty six here, if I recall correctly. So that's kind of how we're, they're able to uh, to do it. So uh, pretty solid solid run here. Uh, kind of, uh, I'd say roughly. 50 something minutes from school timing, if you will. So, uh, yeah. All right. And then. Not much more we'll... to say about that one. Yeah. And then quickly touch on the TLMAS. This is the best part section of the room, best section of the room. Uh, yeah. Uh. So, this, this category has been a lot of fun. This is like probably the silliest part of, of this category. You have to do this ogre ousting game and it is faster to do absolutely nothing for two minutes um if you collect berries you actually lose time because you get a little extra little bit of text or a little award at the end as spider found out <laughs> uh i i decided to in this section to place to do two minute sporkle quizzes um because it's it fits nicely in the two minutes so i was actually uh doing that other people kind of just sit around they grab a drink they get they stretch um but this category in general has been a lot of fun it was a lot of fun to kind of route there was probably a dozen veins that were tried or more um so pretty much it's got the school timing and uh you then go into the dlc area and complete that storyline 
Uh, the current fastest run by Crisis here uses Metacham. And this is something that I, I started looking at and um, struggled with it quite a lot because you have to use two moves that are very inaccurate, which are Zen Headbutt and High Jump Kick, both 90% accuracy. And if you miss them at bad times, you can lose the run. If you miss High Jump Kick, you lose half your health, and that can also just lose the run because then you can just die. Um, but if you hit everything, it's, it's super good. And... Uh, yeah, so pretty pretty good run here by Crisis. Um, using the route here that I actually used in my PB, which was record before this one, where we skip Muscle Band and run a higher level. So I kind of figured it out that you can get less candies, or you can get the same amount of candies but skip the Muscle Bind, the Muscle Band, and the ranges are about the same. Uh, it's actually tiny. It's actually a little bit slower to do that but you get a little more bulk because you're a higher level and you also get a little bit more speed because you're a higher level. And that means your meta cham stat requirements are a little less strict. So you can actually run a higher, uh, more, more options. Uh, we'll talk, we'll talk, we'll go into detail about the route a little bit more uh, next month, I believe, because there's quite a lot of, still more activity going on and potentially another main that might actually top meta cham, which is wild. Um, but this is, this is a really solid time um uh, by crisis um getting uh at the second 143 in this 142 seems possible we'll see if anyone goes for that uh this is my run i got um i had record for about two days before crisis beat it this run had no misses which is insane uh the only big issue that happened was this fight here so in this in this category if you use a super effective move if you critical hit um you get flavor text from the opponent. So it's pretty much like hop. Every fight's a hop fight, pretty much. Um, and so this fight, I was comfortably on 143 pace uh, going into this fight. And so the first thing that goes wrong is because of poor routing, I didn't realize this was like a 8 and 16 range or even worse. So I missed a range here. So that lost time. So I had to two shot and then I got a crit on the second hit. So that gives me flavor text right here. And so right now I was planning to use super effective moves to, because it's safer because they don't miss. Um, and if I had chosen to do that, I would have not gotten 143. So I elected to go for two more Zen headbutts on her third and fourth mons, which are Sinistra, which is a new mon that was introduced as well as uh, Levani. And so luckily I hit both of those. <laughs> and so I ended up getting the 143, barely. So. Um, Congrats for that, uh, on that. And I got another crit here too, which doesn't matter because I already I had already gotten a crit. <laughs> but this fight was so funny. Yeah. Like everything was so clean until then. But um, yeah, this was a lot of fun to put to road and seeing a lot of other people pick it up too. As well as the activity in other mains, which we'll talk about next with the next noted run. Um, uh, do we have, we have a video for this one or no? No, like there's literally no video from Dynam. <laughs> like I tried, I tried Twitch, I tried YouTube. It's just not there. Um, I I'm could have possibly probably got. Oh, you know what? Yeah, he did this offline. I think. Yeah, it was. I think it was an offline run. Which yeah. also, I could have just got the old PB. Now that I think about it. Yeah, um, that's okay. Uh, actually, he... what I could do is should, should maybe be. Yeah, you can pull. I pull something up here. Yeah, because I think it has been at least like the the old PB should be on. Here. His old one should be. Yeah, it should be the same main. Yeah. So the um. There's been other mons that have been looked at, like Espathra, Gardevoir, the sort of corresponding sort of partner or sister Pokemon or brother Pokemon, I should say, to Gardevoir is Gallade, and that's what Dynam has been working on. Uh, Gallade is pretty much exactly the same as Metacham, but it has a little more bulk and slightly better attack. Uh, so Metacham's really strength comes from pure power, which is its ability. It doubles its attack. It only has 60 attack, but with pure power, it's effectively 120. So Gallade is 125. Um, Gallade's problem, instead of having moves that miss, it has moves that have higher crit chance. <laughs> so a crits, again, lose time because of the, uh, the flavor text. So... He uses a really wild strat on one of these massive Titan fights where he actually uses Dire Hit, which I think is the only first first time a Dire Hit has ever been used in a speedrun ever in Pokemon speedrunning history. But they uh, use it in Moon. Oh, they um, do? Okay. Yeah, on Lusamine's uh, Clefable, 
where it's like cosmic powering spamming, you use dire hit so that you can uh, uh just kill okay. it fast because it's a fifty percent crit rate. That's true, yeah. So but yeah, so if dire hit in this, because of the high crit chance moves, dire hit makes moves guaranteed to crit. Specific moves guaranteed to crit, which is what Dynam does on this next fight against this Titan Pokemon. We'll go into a little more detail about sort of the routing that went into and the choices behind choosing these, or the decision making behind choosing these mons. But yeah, it seems like Psychic type is the best. Um, the f sort of four fastest Pokemon that do this category are Psychic types, uh, which just works really well. Yeah. Um, and then for Dynam, because this isn't Dynam's current PB, um, the and the current PB is a 144.26, so 14 seconds quicker than this. Yeah, and um, Dynam is very convinced that he can get 143 with this, which would challenge uh, Metacham. The issue with Gallade is it has the slow EXP curve, so it has to pick up a little bit extra stuff. It has to go out of the way to pick up a Dawnstone to evolve, and... Um, wouldn't, it, wouldn't it be like... You're catching it as what, a, a, a route surge earlier? Like... One Sorry. of them, probably, yeah. So um, you need you need sharpness, which is a yes. 50 50. You need mail, which is a 50 50. And good and stats. And also, you need to get good stats and you need to catch it. Yeah, and so the catch is actually much later. So we catch Metacham about three minutes, or Metatite about three minutes into the run. Uh, you have to wait 20 minutes to catch Curlia because you get it in the DLC area. <laughs> oh, this seems like a really bad reset. Yeah. It's lot. it's really brutal, <laughs> <laughs> but Dynam is Dynam is crazy and, enough to do it. So Psychic, good on him. <laughs> yeah, Terra Psychic is not required for Gallade, but it's helpful. Uh, Terra Psychic is required for Metatite though, Metacham. Oh yeah, yeah. You don't you can't have minus attack. You can't have minus speed. So it's there's a lot lot of stat requirements for this as well, which is which has been pretty right. wild. It's saying you These need are the requirements. 19 plus IV speed? <laughs> ah, there it is. What? Male Curlia, 50%. Trace Curlia, you, which is... Are you out of your mind? <laughs> what is going on with this reset condition? So it's 4.5% <laughs> in a 20 minute reset. <laughs> that seems perfectly fine to me. It's pretty much the same as getting the, uh, the XL candy in... Uh, Exactly, yeah. <laughs> in in Isle of Armor. <laughs> Get Urshifu, so. <laughs> and it's a, it's a faster reset. If, if you're going for record, of course. That's yeah. the that's the main that's the that's the main difference there. It does better be the best top end, like <laughs> <laughs> I would hate if it was, but that would it would be so cool to see. Yeah. It's a cool mod. Uh, but yeah, I think with that we will uh, we'll go to a break because it is it's well, four o'clock for me. Um, I just very need to quickly grab something because I forgot to uh, put it in the video thing. But uh, Ian, thank you. Yeah, for, I need to I need to get going. But yeah, uh, yeah you need to get for, off. Uh, yeah, it's good to be good to be here and uh, have a great rest of the podcast, guys. Hello, everyone. Um, I was putting this on. Tucker and uh, on Reventus, hence why I am the one leading in. But uh, yeah, the uh, High Gold Soul Silver uh, ornament that'll be. I believe the draw is on Monday US time, 1 a.m. UK time on the Tuesday. It's just one of those awkward time zone things. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, so that'll be happening on PSR TV. The, uh, the whole tournament. At least on the English side of things, will be on PSR TV as well. There'll be a, a French restream uh, happening as well on a channel. I can't, I always forget the channels, so my apologies there. But um, yeah, that will also be happening. So if you are if you are French, and you don't want to you want to have the French commentary, then that will be available as well. But yeah, um, look at Rubentus. I'll let you take the majority of this because this is your area. And I'll let you take the majority of this because I have yeah. categories. <laughs> yeah, this category, not a lot of people have ran it, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a very involved thing to start. 
like if you're a new runner and you're starting this game in this category you're gonna have a lot of questions so i was i was lucky to have march who has done a lot of work with this category who could help me especially with this minute for tentacruel here because this might be the hardest minip in a pokemon game this uh yeah the, like, the thing with this tentacruel is uh yeah, you have to do a lot of tweaks in order to get it even just before even before the save but the, the tentacruel is just it's better because it's level 50 it has a mixed moveset poison jab and and surf that you can get pretty easily and yeah it's really really difficult to uh to catch it because yeah you have to get really good stats and it has to hold a uh is it five percent poison barb for a, a range on wake but yeah this category is beat platinum as fast as you can uh with glitches so there's only one glitch and it's tweaking you do it a lot in this run the, the differences between this and, glit and Glitchless is you basically skip a lot of the Team Galactic stuff. Uh, and you do things in an order that's more favorable to you. So basically, you, I was able to enter the uh, route where you get Tentacruel early. Yeah, you'll see a lot of like sequence breaks, but you still have to do seven out of eight of the gym leaders and the e4 yeah so it's not really like hcss where like you're skipping 11 out of 16 gym leaders <laughs> yeah or 12 even yeah and this yeah. route actually fights every gym leader because you want to use fly there is a teleport route that is in theory faster i think but yeah nobody has uh, completed routing for that so you might see that in the future but it doesn't exist just yet And we did this oh. category at uh, PSR Marathon 2023 to show it off. Mm -hmm. um, and there we did a race. So I, when I started running this category, it was about May, early May, I think. Uh, I ran Solo Golak, because that, that was one of the routes that have been developed this year. Where instead of catching Tentacruel, which is really, really difficult, um, yeah, you just use a level 40 go luck and you get a, a few more candies because you can get a lot of candies pretty easily. You can get a go luck that is uh, good enough to finish the run without much difficulty. And it's actually very, very consistent until E4 for go luck. Tentacruel is, uh, is faster for a lot of the mid game. Yeah, part of it. Yeah, go luck has a better E4 generally yeah. if it goes better if it goes well part of what made Golduck like a lot more consistent is the fact that you have the fog route to deal with and Golduck can negate all of the scaries that are on the fog route because of its ability cloud nine yes um, yeah, the fog route we have a 60 percent chance to hit your moves which is really bad risky pets uh so yeah the tentacle manip there is a lot that you need to think about when you do this manip you have to um First of all, you have to get your step count to align because you need the RNG to advance correctly in order to get the tentacle to show up. And you also have to do the tweak first try. So you start on one side of the load line and then you have to... Because the issue is that on this route where the tentacle exists, there are spinners or there are trainers or... Yeah, no, there are, there are spinners, yeah. There's trainers that look around and... Depending on the direction they look in, the RNG will advance differently, even if you hit the seed correctly. So the way this manip works is you start on one side because you need to deload uh, the trainers to be able to to do the manip correctly. So you have to buffer when you load into the game after you already hit the seed, which is two frame window at 60 FPS. You have to buffer, do the tweak first try, I believe it is technically possible to do it without getting it first try, but it'll it'll not be consistent. So I have found the tentacruel before without doing the first tweak first try, but yeah. Generally, you want to do it first try, and then you have to do another tweak, and the second tweak has to be timed 
because RNG still advances even though you've deloaded the, uh, the spinners on the route. So you have to do the second tweak. You have to time it roughly. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you have to get it pretty close. And uh, the last thing you do is you uh, use honey. And the honey, when you use the honey, that's what determines the catch. And um, for this minip, it's only a three frame catch window. Or actually, no, it's, is it four? Yeah, it's four. But the, the, the last frame catches on turn two. Yeah, seeing it right now. You have to do these tweaks pretty much perfectly if you want to get Tentacruel. So you open the menu, that's when the uh, RNG stops advancing. And you time the honey, and that's what determines the uh, the battle seed that you hit and if you're going to get the catch or not. So this is a very, very difficult manip, and it's pretty far into the run. But I, I did get it first try in this... Uh, in this run. This is I... my third time getting a 114 5x <laughs> tentacruel. <laughs> First two pretty... just yeah died to fog out pretty quick. Yeah, fog out has been your nemesis. Especially yes. on good runs. Yeah. So you have a 60% chance to hit on the fog route. I've used like 135 moves and I've hit 52% of them. <laughs> Which is just just horrible. Um I want to ask why the Benip is like this? Like, why do you have to do the tweaks before? Is it just because there's like a very limited number of seeds and like you can't find a better tentacle? Like you have to go for yeah, this but, one. Yeah, yeah. Basically, like, this tentacle. Yeah, this tentacle is pretty amazing that it even exists because this one is like so much better than every single other tentacle that exists it's that are so that are feasible to hit. Yeah, it could. It's kind of it's kind of like the current seed for HTSS glitchless and like it's pretty amazing that this seed exists because there's not that many seeds that you can hit on in HTSS. Yeah, like the big limitation okay, yeah. is like Gen 4. You need the 5% held item and you need the level 50, which is what, a one in twenty? Is it like yeah. thirty to fifty? Yeah. And you need it's... you need really really good stats, you need really good speed and special attack and attack. And clear body ability. Yeah. So, yeah. This route was developed by Worcester for the... for the previous world record. Uh, yeah. This one saves a lot of time on the double tentacle route because you end up keeping Manip for at least 55 minutes in order to get the Golduck to show up without doing a saving quit because a saving quit is pretty slow. So... That's the, the main challenge of this run, is keeping Manip and catching the Golduck, because yeah, you cannot Manip the catch, realistically. Yeah, you can only Manip catches when you do them from a save and quit, really. Like, yeah. Because you're not doing Golduck from a save and quit, you're just like, you're hoping that it gets caught in like a couple net balls. Yeah, because th there are lag frames that you can't really control. That tweak, by the way, is also, you have to tweak to get Golduck and, uh, you also have to time that during minute, just like you do in the tentacruel minute. As part of the minute path. Yeah, yeah. So you, yeah, you keep minip all the way um, to getting the bike, and the NPCs are minipped in a way that you bonk into an NPC, and when he moves out of the way, you can move perfectly out and get the gold luck with honey. But you, yeah, you cannot minip the catch, so it's just thirty-three percent per ball, which is pretty rough. I ended up getting a pretty good catch rate overall. I caught it uh, 17 times out of, uh, yeah, so I ended up with a 40% catch rate, which is pretty good. Except for fog route, Kappa. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Helped me get more runs all the way. So, uh, yeah. And after catching the Golduck, you, Manip is not over. Ideally, you want to keep Manip all the way into, into the Fantina's gym. Because, yeah, if you don't have Manip in there, it can be pretty easy to get seen by one of the trainers in there, and that will just lose you so much time. Um, it's also, by the way, just to cut in, if you want me to move the or to any other like specific yeah. moments, just let me know. Because I've got to say yeah, we've that. Talked about, we've talked about the, the route a bunch. 
even in a prior podcast just to give mm. like context when we go over noted runs um get go over like how we arrived to this run in, in particular like um your pace and like where your run like stands out yeah so the start was pretty standard i tend to get pretty good starts in this category like you manip rival one so i got a five turn fight which saves like 12 seconds over an eight turn which is what you're you will normally get if you don't manip that's after uh, yeah around like five minutes is this the one where you just go up and down between those no spells? this this one oh. doesn't do that oh. luckily I, I i like that i like not having to do that it's easy yeah very easy minute path for the for the beginning yeah this minute path is pretty good actually I don't really have any major complaints about this minip. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like the the, the like chimchar section is not very uh, variant. It's just, no, it no, it's very, very consistent. Good job yeah, of getting two golden. Yeah, but the first issue was in uh, in Rourke's gym on the second trainer because there's an onyx that does a lot of damage to you at around twenty six thirty. 26. Because this this run was actually really good. I got a couple good crits, so I was on pretty good pace going into the gym. And here comes the Onyx. Basically, this Onyx has uh, three moves. It has Rock Throw, Harden, and Tackle. And Rock Throw does like 14 max. I get Rock Throw on the first turn, and that's just unfortunate. You can actually kill the Onyx in two hits with a defense drop. But it's like a you need a one in sixteen to do that, and it doesn't have kill AI either, so it didn't give me the damage that I wanted. It just gave me tackle, which yeah, you really want to have blaze after, after you beat Rourke. And this HP, I'm probably not going to get it because you level up here, and evolve, so you get pretty high HP. Yeah, this differs so, from yeah. this differs from glitchless because in any percent you are going to teach rock smash to chimchar which yeah. makes it so that you don't want to fight the worker in the mine and instead you fight this trainer in the gym um but you're still fighting him like as chimchar with rock smash yeah yeah so after after work i didn't have blaze so like my time at work was pretty good but no blaze is means I'm going to lose a few seconds or a couple turns possibly on the Mars split. You can see I'm 15 HP here, but I'm going to level out of blades before I need it. So it's pretty frustrating when that happens, but I yeah, can't do anything about it. And at 54 minutes is when the gold deck stuff happens. I got a very good, like the previous record uh, lost like 45 seconds to uh, the Gardenia split because of the Pachirisu double. Um, but yeah, I had a pretty good fight there, so... This is was pretty standard for me to get this kind of pace. So you have to do this tweak while keeping Manip. This guy will move, move out of the way. And this is where you encounter the Golduck. And uh, in this run, I didn't catch a first ball. First ball is really, really nice, but I lost like, I don't know, I think it's like 15, 20 seconds getting it in second ball. Well, you said it was like a 33% chance. Each, yeah, each 33%. Rate, but... yeah, so like... And you have to do like an hour of perfect style. play to get there. Yeah, like second time catch sounds very good still. Based on all yeah, it's about, it's about like fifty percent to get it in two balls. So mm -hmm. it is definitely not the worst in a Pokemon speed run, but yeah, it's it's not not that great. But it's what you have to do in order to get record in this in this game. I think I don't think a different route or I don't I think this gold luck will be in every every record moving further. Yeah, this as... game. As we mentioned before, um, what we used to do before we did like this commitment to Golduck is um, like go back all the way to Sand Gym, which is like the second down, and 
manipulate a level 40 tentacle over there, which is like a pretty huge detour. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's... Goal looks a lot better, but it's also a big barrier for runs because you need to catch it without minute. Um, while there have been runs that like do save and quit gold hook into tentacruel, people don't really like to do that because it's generally just like not worth it. Yeah, the save and quit loses like one minute, so it's really not something you want when you can save a minute by just keeping RNG Minip. So I kept RNG Minip. I did perfect movement from Golduck to here. So I'm going to keep Minip into the, the uh, into my Coronet and get through without using a Repel. And afterwards, there are a couple of spinners that you get past even before getting to Haro. It says you made a slight mistake, but it's fixable. Yeah. Uh, after after my coronet, I I made a movement error, and I accidentally ran in front of one of the trainers. Yeah, this guy. So if you go back a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, a bit more view of that. Yeah. So you have to dismount the bike in order to skip an encounter that would otherwise happen. And yeah, you're supposed to talk to this guy from the side, but I made a mistake, which could have lost Manip. I. Or could have lost, uh, yeah, lost Manip, because you have to go past another spinner after this. But yeah, it ended up working out. Yeah, so you don't there's have to ways be, to like, recover perfect. the Manip yeah. then. Yeah, uh, depending on the mistake. Yeah. Okay. This one, this one is fine. Just barely. Like I don't know when the the paint the artist will turn. But he didn't turn there, so I didn't get seen. I think it's like depending on the timing that you enter the grass on, he can look left at some points, which is a bit scary. But yeah, it didn't happen here, so I was able to get Minip into the gym, which saves so much time to not having to use repels and being able to just run th straight through the gym without having to worry about getting seen by the trainers. And the, the Fentina stuff isn't that interesting. You have a Golduck, which pretty much just destroys everything for the next little bit. Up until Maylene, basically. Uh, so, so you can go to 104, which is where the Flight Week section begins. Earlier? Uh, yeah, there's a couple of spinner passes, but yeah. Oh, it's a Barry. Is it Barry in this yeah. game? Yes. This is when a pretty big movement gauntlet begins. Two spinner passes that you do set up for. Got unlucky and the second one turned right as I got there, but just gotta wait. And the next week is probably the hardest. Actually, no, no. The, the second next week is probably the hardest week in the run. Because it's it's... Like this one is important, the first one, because you have to go through some grass there, and if you don't have a repel on, you can you can get an encounter and you can soft lock yourself. So that tweak right there is really difficult. You have to go one tile up and then one tile down and one tile up again. You do that you do that tweak twice in the run. So that one's very difficult. And in this section, it's really easy to get soft locked or crash the game. There's a bunch of, of mistakes you can easily make that will kill the run, basically. So you have to be pretty practiced on this part. Especially these three tweaks here. And this first one here, like, if you accidentally go one right after you do the tweak, the, the run is pretty much over. Like, I don't think you can recover from that. Yeah, this part looks really cool. And I did it really well in this run. Like I got Pretty all the tweaks first try. All these first try, yeah. Yeah. It's really impressive. Yeah, that looks smooth. Except for the the second one, but that one was second try. So I was very happy with this, and this is actually my uh, like a mailing gold. Like I think right before this run, I removed the the Fantina split because it introduced 
Like, depending on if you get Confuse Ray or not from Fentina, you sacrifice Starly in a different spot in order to get past the double battle. So that that would just created some some fake golds, which I didn't didn't like. So, but this this run was or this uh, Malian split was really really good. Ended up being, like, I made community golds for this, and yeah, the the this was one of the better ones. So if you go to one hundred eight thirty, the uh, I found a tiny optimization in this in Maylene's gym, which is, I was pretty amazed that nobody has found this yet. So basically if you just run all the way and bonk into the punching bags, you do like a hard bonk, you do like kick it twice. But if you, if you stop, you just stop moving for, for a split second and then like turn frame into them, you only get one bonk. So. It saves like over three seconds if you do everything perfectly, which is pretty pretty crazy. Oh. Like how many runs have people done of this game and there were just three seconds on the board just like that? Like I found this on accident when I like made a movement mistake in, in the, the marathon, right? in the marathon race, yeah. I was like, like wait, yeah. that's faster. <laughs> which is pretty funny. So That's one of the things that allowed me to save a few seconds in this run. I think we saw the tentacle manip and the the fog route. So, yeah, you you did yeah mention that um or the part that I highlighted but was playing when we were kind of getting introduced was uh yeah your step count problem like before yeah. the manip. What was that about? Uh, so basically, I had like. I know my step counter. I'm I'm looking at the the bottom screen in in this section, seeing what my step counter is. I took a few too many steps to uh, like get the lowest possible cycle, so I was just barely over. So I had to do like a hundred extra steps, and then when I did those a hundred extra steps, I went too far to the side. So I crossed the load line, which kills the manip. Like it it makes the manip not work anymore. So I had to do another 100 steps, which, yeah, I was pretty, unha pretty unhappy about, but... Would you say that's, like, yeah. the worst part of your run? Uh, I would say oh, E4 lost guess. me a lot more time, but yeah, this lost me, like, 15 seconds. Okay. Compared to a perfect split. But yeah, you can go to 130.10 to see the... Probably the funniest part of the run, the glitchy cutscene, after you leave the... The gym. Yeah, I'll have a bit of a walk in the gym before it comes up. Yeah, because this cutscene is supposed to play when Barian is a different spot, so <laughs> Alright. <laughs> he just he just he's out. <laughs> People need him. And then right after this cutscene, like if you just let it play, it's just Barry comes up and then he's in two different places at once. The game just gets really confused at this cutscene when when you haven't done the rival fight yet. Because normally there's a rival fight when you when you enter this gym, but you tweak to deload that rival fight. So he's there and he's behind the board, and he just ran into the woods, or he ran up from the woods. So it's really weird. Very well made games. <laughs> Yeah, it's a bit funny that they were aware, obviously, of the tweaking glitch when they when they made Platinum. Like, obviously, they they patched the void, so the the void is no longer as powerful as it is in Diamond and Pearl, where you can just walk to the Hall of Fame. So, obviously, they were aware of the glitch existence, but they they didn't patch it, and even in HSS, it's not patched. I wonder if it was just something they could never properly figure out. Yeah, or stop. yeah, it's a pretty like pretty integral thing to how the game loads da loads data so mm. i'm guessing they it's like they can only, fixing it yeah they Would've... they basically limited it to like what nine nine squares instead of like infinitely yeah. expanding the void i don't know why they did that but it is what they did yeah and this part is a pretty movement heavy section as well i missed that tweak which is probably one of the easier ones that you do 
ESPN. So the idea here is you flag Sunny Shore in order to just be able to fly there later. And you also pick up a hidden full restore right here. That is uh, is very useful. And you have to you have to do this cutscene. If you don't do this cutscene here, if you don't like land on this tile when you first enter Sunny Shore, your game will crash. So like if you forget to go on this tile, if you're doing like the solo gold arc route where you don't do the flagging thing, you do like a different tweak that makes you just go straight into the gym. And yeah, if you forget to go here first, your game will crash. It's, so you, it's a very strange requirement just to have to have that cutscene specifically. <laughs> yeah, I guess the, the cutscene just plays, but it doesn't know how to like the game doesn't know how to progress when when Flint isn't on screen or something. It's it's weird that it crashes there. Like could have just made him talk to you still, but no, it doesn't just doesn't work. So another tweak to deload the camera operators. In order to be able to go here earlier because you normally you this part is after the snow right you have to chase the grunt uh oh yeah yeah well actually yeah. no you have to chase the grunt and what you go to you go to cyrus one and then after cyrus one you do byron and then the bombs explode and then when the bombs explode that's when yeah the cameras leave after byron yeah so you do this guy before byron instead and this guy is actually really tough normally so you need to have choice specs in order to beat this guy with surf so that's why that's why we do the fog out early you could delay the fog out but this fight will be a lot worse because you yeah you don't kill the the gold bat i think and you have to do it with hydro pump i think that's the idea which yeah. the fact that you even use hydro pump is I, I hate it so much. <laughs> I use Hydro Pump on Wake and on the trainer before Cyrus and on Cyrus. Yeah, and you can go to 138.45-ish. You can see another optimization that I made. So basically, I use a repel two tiles after this fight. To, in order to make this uh, spinner pass free, because I don't, I am really bad at run to bikes for some reason. So I found a way to uh, found his weakness. Yeah, I found a way to make this easier. So normally, or in Worcester's run, he gets the the rare candy in the snow route. I decided to get this one instead. I think it's a bit, a bit faster to get this one. And I made a spinner setup that works just like this. It makes it really, really easy to do. But other than that, not really any any route differences between his run and my run. Yeah, it looks like you just uh, were following the same stuff, but you thought that you could get a better run. Yeah. Uh, what? I want to know, like, at what point in your grind did you like realize that record was like within your capability? Because like I know you were like around like two forty two. For quite yeah. a while, and then like, yeah, the thing is, yeah, it's sudden, just like... really hard to. The tentacle manip is so hard to do, it's so deep in the run, and it's hard to get gold luck as well. So I think it was when I first got the the one fourteen tentacle, the first one, where I just I got completely destroyed by the fog route. That was when I I knew that yeah I can I can do this, yeah. and I'll, I also had a, a run. Uh, I think like a, a few days before this one where I I got sucker punch crit by the Absol in Victory Road. Yeah, it was like very close to record, but yeah, on pace. That, that was crazy. I, that, that was like part of the that was on the day where Groger lost a run to Budo's uh, Onyx and like Skoa also like lost a record pace run in DP glitch list. It was just like the very cursed day. Three yeah. records lost. Yeah, you can go to 203.30. That's the, the Volkner fight. Volkner is probably another reason why you really want to use this tentacle. 
And uh, yeah, it's because the the both the Jolteon and the Electivire are ranges. The Jolteon won't kill you, but the Electivire will. So fortunately, the Electivire is a 15 and 16 range, and the Jolteon is like a 13 and 16. Or 14. I think it was 14 and 16 for me because of the way the XP worked out in this run. I know that um, when Worcester was like routing this, like he was really having trouble deciding like where to use a candy. Yeah. Um, I guess you guys decide on this because like I, I can imagine Volkner could be worse. Yeah, it's it's the same. It's basically the same as Worcester getting the same, the way this XP works. So. It's all about the first double battle in Lake uh, Lake Verity. Because if, if Goldock faints in that battle, Tentacruel gets all the experience, and that's enough um, to get level 61 here. But if you if you if Goldock gets XP in that fight, you uh, <laughs> you don't get level 61 and the range is a bit worse. I see. It's kind of like the range is 14. Yeah, the range is like 14 and 16. And I've yeah. missed that before. <laughs> Yeah, you, you basically just barely get level 61. Let's see. And yeah, I got Damn. a really... This split here was really, really good, because I got super fast spinners. 802 is really, really, really good. 237 pace at this point. Yeah. And my my uh my berry split was also going really really well until about two twenty two ten. Ten was that? Two twenty two ten yeah. Oh two twenty two ten not yeah. Brain, brain, brain not there. <laughs> yeah, so you go to plus two on this, or is it plus three? No, it's plus three. Yeah, you go plus three. Use choice spec surf on the Sympolion. And I had no idea this was a range, but apparently it's a 14 and 16 range. And Barch didn't know either. He did a lot of routing for this. He had no idea, so that lost me like quite a bit of time. And I could have died as well. I think this has to do with like the poker spread you were saying. I don't think so. I think it's always a range. Oh. I, I looked at every single one of my runs and I always had this special attack. Oh, okay. So you the range was always 14 and 16. Yeah, I just had no clue. Oh, that's cool. I was also in a scenario where I discovered a range recently. <laughs> like, what, what? It's not a great feeling. No. It's like, what the heck? I could yeah. have died to this. Thanks, like, Fred. <laughs> you could have died to, like, Crit Shadow Glow or something. Yeah. That would have been stupid. But yeah, it was a pretty good split all overall, but it would have been better if I hit that range. So I made community goals for this run and this category, and... Basically, if that Empoleon had died, I would have beaten Worcester's split for that, and I would have pretty much every single split except for Mars, where I'm, I've, I'm, be I've been beaten by two seconds. I uh hope -huh. by March. So he got like a crit on Progly. Dang. So, the community golds are at high two thirty four. So, the the time I really wanted for this run was like a two thirty six. 236 would be insane. But the time that you really wanted or the time that you think that can happen? Uh I don't know if a 235 can ever happen. I would say probably with this route, no. 236 can definitely happen though. You need a really, really good run for that. So you can go to 231 and that's Lucian and Cynthia. They they are the ones that really determine your pace in Elite Four. So, Mr. Mime, you really don't want to see it use light screen. So then you have to lose like two turns. So, getting light screen turn one lose me, lost me a lot of time. Is it just like straight up 50 50 between light screen reflect? I think so, yeah. I'm lucky, man. So, if you get, if you get light screen, you have to set up another X special, or you have to waste a turn, basically. It doesn't help you to set up more. But you have to kill the the Gallade. The Gallade is the problem. When light screen is up, you don't kill it with light screen up. Not like a scary fight, but no. Or it can be scary. Like the the Bronzong has earthquake. Oh, oh, you don't kill it. 
Uh, yeah, no, if yeah, if you if you get reflect, you set up another X special on on the Ronzong. Uh, and uh, it can it can kill you with a with a crit EQ. And Mr. Mime kill you? Uh, That's no, Mr. Mime won't kill you, but you can get light screen again if you set up more. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so ideally, like the perfect solution goes uh, reflect, and then Bronzog can use calm mind. But yeah, if you get if you get light screen, you don't set up on Bronzong, you set up on you set, yeah, you do the setup on Mr. Mime instead, and that'll prevent you from taking damage from Bronzong, but you also have to go into the menu and heal before Cynthia when you get Reflect, so you lose another 10 seconds-ish. That that lost me 237, basically, getting Reflect, getting Light Screen. Fetch. Yeah. And the, the Cynthia fight is pretty standard. As long as you don't get crit, you pretty much win. Have you done crit on that fight so. before? Uh, no. I don't think I have. But you also have to remember to take off the choice specs, which I have forgotten before. Uh, including in the marathon, I think? Yes. Yeah, that's pretty much this category. I had a lot of fun playing playing this category. It's really fun to play when you get on a run, and it's really fun to learn as well. If you if you're doing like solo Golduck, that's pretty fun to learn. I know that like Skoa really loves the category. Like I can imagine like if you're good at the category, then you'll like playing it. Yeah. So for, for people who are a little less experience it definitely does seem a little daunting with all the tweaks and minutes that are built in but luckily they, there are like lighter routes that you can take with you know solo gold look and such so it's yeah solo gold look is pretty accessible and the uh, clear body on this fight here is really nice like psychic but f drops would be so bad if you if that if you didn't have a clear body, but clear body just prevents that from happening. Because you have to do a lot of setup in order to, to win against Cynthia with no no choice specs. And Golek does have a better E4 in general, but... Tentacruel is also pretty good. So, are you... Planning on trying to improve this PB more currently, or have you just taken a break and going game uh, like yeah, the Hard Ghost or Silver tournament? I think I'll go back if someone beats it. Hmm. But uh, as of now, I'm trying to do Y2 challenge mode instead. Ah. You're not the only person who else has been. Echi, I think. Echi has been ah. doing challenge mode. It probably would be Echi that I'm thinking of, yeah. This so, so flat any percent has like a little bit of room for improvement on the routing side. With uh, well, currently the route gets a flyer, but apparently teleport is like not much faster. Do you know? Yeah, you, you could catch an Abra as well. The, the Abra catch is worse, so you'd have a more like more resets in the beginning. So you have to taunt the Abra and then catch it with a Pokeball. I, forget the catch rate but it's it's not great but yeah i think in in theory it's like 20 seconds faster but you can also like the timing is difficult because teleport has to do a lot more movement and more spinner passes where like if the spinners take longer to turn there goes your teleport time save yeah it, it drastically changes the route as well like you don't do yeah Maylene, you don't get fly you don't do all those tweaks to get fly you do like movement backwards because you don't have fly, you're setting teleport spots. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it gets it's pretty complicated. In, it's present in older world records with like double tenta because you have to get Hebra to make double yeah. tenta work. Um, but yeah, all that stuff is like pretty comparable to fly. Like it's not that much different. Yeah, and fly is significantly easier. Yeah. 
flies. It cuts out a lot of stuff. But I think both of them are pretty cool. If you haven't seen them. Yep. Yeah, I really like this category. But yeah, that's pretty much it about the run. That's uh, pretty much it. All right. Then. So in that case, we've been thank you for going all through that. Uh, yeah, very interesting to like hear your perspective. I hope. I point out a lot of different things as well just during your run. Uh, as someone who does not do DS runs, um, that has had okay explain a lot of these many times during the podcast, like at least like different bits of different runs. It is always interesting just to hear just something I don't yeah, fully I do understand. Best. I do my best to explain this category, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, the DS games are fun minutes. because of the way the manips work. Like, you can keep manip for so long. That's what makes the Golduck route even possible. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and with that, though, we'll go on to... I guess the upcoming marathon runs. Being as we've already done those runs now at this point. Uh, so, starting off, um, the the host that isn't here, uh, Etiquette, doing a, he's doing something Scarlet and Violet. I don't know what he's doing. This doesn't say. Um, it just says Scarlet and Violet, and I just happen to know that's Etiquette doing that for Speedrun Coliseum 2023 um, in the UK. That because these are all UK times. That will be at 20 to 5 in the morning. So, not very EU friendly, but if you are on the, or just probably anywhere in the US, I guess, that's going to be a pretty decent time. Um, there is Breaking the Habit 3, uh, Furious, doing Let's Go Eevee 80% No Mount Skips, that will be at uh, half 7 in the evening on the 15th of October. Um, Alright, Giochi Dion Fiato Ortuna, uh, 2023, Italian Marathon, um, there is Benson, oh, not Benson, Benson 93, uh, doing Crystal Full Item Rando on the 21st of October, uh, just before 9pm, and then the next day, just before 6pm, there is a uh, Stocky doing Snap Any Percent. Uh, Brat Halloween 2023 Brazilian Marathon, uh, just the one run from Chrome on the 25th of October at 2pm. And then last but not least for what I could find, uh, Inter Glitches La Fete du Skip uh, French Marathon. Um, if you're French and in the chat, you feel free to laugh at that pronunciation. Um, there is Silver with BDSP Any Percent. On the 29th of uh, 29th of October, at j just after 9 a.m. in the morning, so yeah, those are all the marathon runs that are coming up. And then yeah, we've just got the the leaderboard roundup. Uh, as always, just feel free to point out any particular runs in particular, uh, Tucker or Rubentus. And yeah, we'll start off with. Uh, I guess crafted in 10th, because we already mentioned Grogi earlier, with a 146.09. They didn't take part of the 80%? Is it not on there? No, they didn't accept it. Like, Alwo submitted it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Alwo. All right. Okay. Interglitches Interglitch didn't accept him. Okay. Sorry. I'm with you now. I'm with you now. Um. Yeah, who else? Uh, Jadiwi. Uh, yeah, 147.52 with a recorded run. I don't, which is like, this isn't his actual PB. He has like a 146, but uh, he did that before he had a capture card. Yeah, fair, fair. Now he's proven um, his worth. Trial Pizza with a 157.56 in 7th for any percent glitches classic. Um, oh, yeah. Was that a qualifying time, or was that in the event? That was in the final event, yeah. Final event. That was he, the second he, place. Yeah. He he also got a one fifty seven fifty seven on the first 
weekend of qualifiers. Yeah. In order yeah, to that's why it says thank you, Pidgey, because Pidgey saves one second in Hall of Fame. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair. Uh, Square uh, in 10th with a 158 26. Yeah. Uh, it was during the first weekend of qualifiers. Uh, good at being simple with a 158 36 in 13th. Yeah, Only 10 seconds in. Third difference. place time in the finale. Oh, Prima got second. Simple got third. Yep. With these PBs. Cool, cool. Head Bobby there, 159.38. Is that from the qualifying yeah. round? That was for the qualifiers. It didn't qualify, though. Um, ah. I know that Head Bob like, was really beating himself up over a mistake in Victory Road, where like, he pushed the strength boulder. In a way that he had to leave the room and uh -huh. do it again. So it could have been like a low 159, which could have been a qualifying time. Unfortunate, but those things do happen sometimes. A primal with a yellow Aim Glitches Classic, uh, a 20840. More than there as well. Um, Etienne, the only Gen 2 runner this month. <laughs> Couple of runs there. Uh, it's the same run, in fact. Just yep. manipulate so we can go on both leaderboards. Even no, copying the, the comment. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Not 3 DSVC, which he did before. So I True. moved on. I mean, I would do the same. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Bouncy's run right here. The Sapphire. 159 pretty upsetting because he had a 157 pace run but he misclicked on the laggy elements in e4 oh, and he died that's yeah. unfortunate yeah he had a bunch he has had a bunch of good paces in sapphire yeah oh yeah, he's uh, pretty good at gen 3 just some uh context from Ananan. um like at 159.38 being 16th, when at the start of 2021, Raya was third with a 159.58. So, big improvement over the last couple of years. And especially, I assume, with this event helping out that too. Yeah, the quality of runners has gone up in, in droves. Yeah. Uh, Chibi Toothy in 10th for Elite 4 Round 2 uh, for Fire Relief Green. A 333.24. Uh, Math Genius in 7th for Emerald. A 232.21. Very glitchless. Outdated as of yesterday. What's the current time? By... One second. Uh, Is it 15 seconds, I think? 232.06. So yeah, 15 yeah. seconds. Is that moved uh moved him up a place or um not sure. Okay. Oh, um mentioned those plot like He moved up one spot. Hey, Six congrats. Places. Congratulations there then as well. Um Platinum world records have both shifted hands. Well I guess there's one more before round two. We don't talk about it though. Hmm? Yeah. Platinum's both the Platinum's records are in different hands now. Yeah. yeah. It's just the the oldest record now after the classic was beaten is now Worcester's Elite Four Round Two time for Platinum. Oh is it? it I thought it was I think uh, it is. Crystal uh, no. Minute plus. Or maybe, or something. No, yeah. yellow yeah, yellow, yellow classic. classic. Yeah. Yellow, yellow, yeah. Be, uh, Not yellow, a great yellow. category. But uh <laughs> Maybe people will do it now that oh. it's the oldest. Uh, you give me a moment. It's not going to have all the records, but I mean, I'll have the, the oldest ones at least. Do... Oh, okay. No, technically <laughs> it's Hard Gold Soul Silver Eighty Percent English Desmond Ray <laughs> from <Yeah>. 2013. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's funny. But well, yeah. the, the, uh, the real consequences the of the MU split. <laughs> The yeah. real oldest one is the yellow classic record by Xarian right there, 203.20. Yeah. 
still staying. And then, and then Chris followed by Crystal Mid Bliss, followed by E4 round two. Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely not many more that were from um pre twenty twenty two. Um like for example even it's the the patch version there, that's already been beaten for the shield as well, so like that's that doesn't really count either. So yeah, it's only a what one two. You know, once you Four. once you look past once you look past the E4 round two run, like I honestly feel like the rest of the runs are like not even that old. Like E4 round two and before are like the runs where like I can expect the runs to be like beaten. But after that it's just like Yeah, for DS is the next one is like DP glitchless, which is doesn't feel yeah, like that long ago. It's, it's it's a good run. <laughs> like, yeah, from twenty twenty one. The quality of records, I mean, just goes to show the quality of records has gone way up since 2019. Uh, yeah, as we go on, there's actually quite a lot of the world records already there. Uh, Yakuso uh, for Black 2 Y2, sixth place in any percent on DS slash DDS, a 3.11.43. It's a pretty nuts yeah. time for a second finish run. Oh, that's his second finish run? Yeah, oh, I mean, he's yeah. done a lot of runs on emulator and on uh, like oh, Manipolis, right. but for a uh, frame minute second finish run, it's a very, very solid time. I'm really in seventh yeah. place now, huh? I'm going to do and, something yeah, like that. Yeah, reminder that he is 14 years old. He's, oh, all right. That play <laughs> as well. The new Skoa. Seventh place, bro. <laughs> Ain't no way. I'm not gonna say washed up because <laughs> that would make me that would make me even more washed up in comparison. Um nah, it's all good, it's all good. I have a lot of work to do in white too. Lucas PGLP for twelve place in Omega Ruby any percent. A two fifty seven thirty eight. He also has a and yeah, new the... run of XY2 at 352. It's nice to see yeah. uh, 3DS runners. Gen 6 run. They do exist. Uh, let's go runs there. Ah, Joker's my... Joke has the aim to get like I think it's like twenty different runs on the any on the diploma leaderboard. <laughs> the Joker boards. Oh. Joker when he beats his record with Joker. Funny enough, Joker actually does not Joker. have the record anymore. It's T Pat and kick and run. <laughs> oh what the? <laughs> yeah, okay. like T Pat. So they, the they, they got a ridiculously good run. Unreal. Um, I think actually just before that run as well, like Joker and T-Pat were like really close to beating it in a marathon, and there was something that happened. I don't remember what. But anyway, yeah. There was uh, something like that. This is also I should point out a bit outdated. Obviously, T-Pat. Well, T-Pat. Okay, he hadn't submitted the run, so that was always going to be there anyway. But I think like the uh, coming up for the Scarlet and Violet stuff. Um, some runes got verified like just before the podcast, so they won't be on. Uh, yeah. um, but um, second for Pedro in Galarian Star Tournament for Japanese A six fifty nine sixteen. Uh, we already talked about BDSP. Uh, Lens Arceus Blood Dirk in fifth A three fifty nineteen on the English, and then in fifth for the Japanese side Agpak. With a 349.05. I don't see many uh, non Halkyrie slash uh, shady sub fours in RCS, so. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah, and like Blood Dog's like the other runner for like catch them all. Like, they like, definitely have experience, but yeah, you don't, you don't see too many Legends Arceus runs that aren't Halk or shady recently, so. 
Always good to see that. Uh, do, do, do. So yeah, at this point in time, Head Bob was first. Now he's fourth with a one forty four twenty eight. But he old man, uh, he mask on English. I think right now it's Iron second with a one forty three and Crisis first with the better one forty three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's what it is. Yeah. Um. On the Japanese side of things, uh, Kujia with a 238-32. Um, they include, well, like they go from the beginning, so that's why the times are longer. Uh, it's also the only Japanese run right now, so I have no context as to whether it was a very good run or not. But it is world record. Uh, stadium, Jim Lee Castle Round 1, Switch Virtual Console. Ghost Kumo with a 138.21. Uh, RDA in 18th with a 149.04. Uh, Battle Revolution, Corvin May in 10th with 80% round 1 on English, a 348.08. Uh, well, Snap runs there. Couple of Pinball runs there. Um, EMD, red, red, uh, red, blue rescue team. Uh, 80% no quick save, no wind mail, Japanese Wii U. Second place for Kunai with a 2.13.29. Uh, for Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Sky. Second place for Eponymous with 80% no wind mail. On Emulator, a 5.13.16. Uh, Super Mystery, uh, Super Mystery Dungeon. Uh, Cinder Dog in second place with 80% wind mail. Uh, on English 3DS, a 8, 80537. Uh, Detective Pikachu. Funny to mention that scene as it came out yesterday. Oh, the sequel came out yesterday. Second place for Gonzi, a 51910. Uh, a few uh, ROM hack uh, world records. Single Battle Easy. Uh, for Lucario, Boss Cat with a world record of 536. Infinite Fusion, uh, Classic 80% version 5.1 plus. Uh, Alimra? Uh, Alimra. Uh, with a 118.26. I believe they got a shiny given their comment. Uh, Thorn in second place with a 133.29. Uh, and then on the modern version, uh, Dullahan. With the any percent world record, a one forty three forty. Uh, King Pigeon, uh, poker clicker, uh, poker clicker one five one Pokemon auto clicker codeless, three hours fifty seven thirty four seconds. Uh, Shifty with the blindfolded any percent glitchless world record for I assume I guess yeah red and uh, they don't do blue for some random reason. Uh, two fifteen thirty seven. Uh, I have no idea why that is, why that format is just messed up for Ruby Sapphire, <laughs> but we'll roll with it. Oh, no, I know why. What is that comment from Ocean Bagel? Hmm. <laughs> what is that? What is that link? Why is there a pastebin link in there for like that bit? <laughs> that is browser tracking for you. Ah. <laughs> uh, Oh my days. Well, anyway, Ruby Glitchless, uh, I see with a 204.44. Ocean Bagel with Contest Master Beauty, a 246.52. Ruby Glitchless is pretty cool. Like, it's so much worse than, than Sapphire, but it's still cool. You manipulate Groudon instead. Seems like a pretty good time at 204. Yeah, yeah. I think Sometimes. When the, oh, God. I think people played on Ruby, like, 10 years ago. The record was like 230 or something. Deathless resetless first try ground on Yolo Ball. Seems pretty good. Yeah. Also, sometimes the worst categories are like worse, like more harder to finish categories where you have to deal with rubbish, I guess, like ground on, which doesn't seem like it'd be a good end one. Sometimes they're more fun. Yeah, I mean, I can yeah. see the. The fun in playing that. 
The fun and misery. <laughs> Um, oh. yeah, Chrome with a fair few, uh, like all main pokes. Uh, also, Bang in second for Manipolis, a 21008. The uh, Chrome Butterfree Gyarados and Raichu World Records there. Good for Primeape. Um, Emerald Battle Pike Silver, Omar Bench Banner. Yeah, Omar Bench Banner with a 1956. And then Minipolis in second for Prabs with a 306.53. And that category finally exists. <laughs> it exists. Emerald Minipolis, finally. Wait, what? It didn't exist for until like recently. Okay, that's that's a bit weird. I mean, yeah. I know Crafted has like the record, technically, a 239. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's just, just it's a pretty new category. It just was recently added. I guess I think the Gen One or Three community couldn't like agree on the rules on are you oh. allowed to save and quit or not? Oh, because of the broken RNG in Emerald. Yeah. <laughs> so I think in the rules now it just says every save and quit is judged by the moderators. Probably fine. Makes sense to me. I mean, yeah. it's just being in the spirit of Monopolis. Yeah. Pretty much. Are you allowed to, like, I mean, you're pretty much. You, you, you gotta be allowed to, like, check which mudkip you hit based on your frame. Because, like, you're allowed to do that in Fire Red. So I think by extension, you could be able to do that in Emerald. Uh -huh. I think I think the the initial RNG is still still fine. It's just if you save and quit, it's it's weird. But yeah, yeah. Emerald Manipulus yeah, is, yeah, is a is a weird a weird thing, but it's it's good to have. It's a it's a cool round. Yeah. Great, great for them. Um, Diamond Pearl Manipulous Glitchless on emulator. Uh, Matt with a 40417. Um, is that like the only run of that category? I have no context for like that's Probably a good, a very small board. Fair yeah, enough. it's not a very popular category on emulator, but 404 yeah. is a decent time. But the, re yeah. the record on console is 353, I think. Uh, yeah. Oh, shoot. I, I'm looking at the wrong game, but it's, it is 353. Yeah, and getting getting a sub 4 is pretty difficult because there's a lot of a lot of things that can happen in DP with the random AI and the manipulous stats and you have to catch like a few, a few Pokemon and you have hidden power for Rourke and all that stuff. Sometimes you can keep your hidden power, like if you have grass, you can keep it for wake and that's better. Yeah, the HP routing is pretty cool. Uh -huh. And then you have Palkia stats. If you if you get a terrible Palkia, it's just pain. Uh high goals all silver. Uh minus seventy percent on emulator A2, 12, 18. Uh you all main poke world records, one for Galeno, one for uh, Junior ninety eight. Lino's really stretching the doability of a uh, alt main. Yeah, these these alt mains are alt really bad. Are they? There's a reason why nobody has done them before. Yeah, Heracross, you get it. At, you catch it at level four, fifty minutes into the run. And Zubat, and Zubat, Leech Life. Super yeah, like Zubat is like you beat Whitney like two hours in. Oh yeah, yeah. Galino is like a popular French streamer, so he did the run, and someone else was motivated to to beat him. <laughs> so somebody, yeah, somebody beat him. Yeah, apparently uh, Noyles with a five eleven oh six. Quite frankly, I'm pretty surprised that a 524 is not the most optimized run. 
<laughs> Albo with a send a plus run, uh, 347. I believe it's... outdated as well. Uh, what was he that just one hasn't submitted a, a newer PB, but it doesn't put him any further up on the leaderboard, so. I think it's a 346 now. He it's a pretty cool route. You are. Uh, is she yeah, a shoe? Probably, the most, yeah. oh. probably oh. the most competitive all main in the HCSS right now. Typhlosion. Yeah. Pretty cool to see. And he is still playing that category. When will he get to the rest of the viewer redemptions? <laughs> All right. Is she issue with the black, uh, black, white, all main poke samurai Japanese world record a three thirty nine forty two. Uh, fourth place for Minneapolis uh, English on emulator for black two white two missed S four a three twenty six thirty. Um, Omega Chad with an alt main Decidui on all 3DS, uh, world record a 5.56.47. Um, second place in Dynamax Adventure 2 player for uh, Bradlow, uh, Bradlow Janssen and Ruby Rickert, or Groovy Rickert with a 7.09. Um, Stadium category extension world records there. A few of them for Satori 1707. And then also one for Switch 2795. Complete the game, huh? 10 hours. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I've never played the game. Uh, I have no idea. Um, Pokemon Coliseum, third place for uh, Big Thick, uh, Big Thick Blissey, uh, 652 on Ditch Rui. And then, uh, last but not least, Pokemon XC How is Gale that name of Darkness. <laughs> hmm? How is that name allowed? For the Ditch I, Rui runner. I, I, it's, it's <laughs> perfectly fine. But uh, Helio Knight with the Jolteon uh, Teddy Ursa or Ursaring, I guess. Uh, world record with four or oh, with a four forty six forty four. And that is the leaderboard roundup. Rebentus, thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Rebentus. Congrats on yeah. your second overall record. Thank you very much. And Tucker as well, thank you for hosting as always. Thank you to Ian as well, who had to leave part way through. Um, Educate might be back next month. I don't know. Cause... Well, actually, I think a better thing is I don't even know when the podcast is going to be next month because the Heart Gold Soul Silver tournament's happening. So. But now we'll say potentially the 4th, because that is the first Saturday uh, of November. But again, we'll we'll see. We'll we'll figure it out closer to time because it is not tournaments. They take, they take a lot of the weekends. Um. But yeah, I think. Is there any any other last things to mention, uh, Tucker? I'm I'm uh, getting hungry. No. <laughs> yeah, Signups end in a couple of days. Oh the yeah, they do end up then yeah. in a couple yeah. of days. Did I have the links for that somewhere? I did. I posted this before, I'll just post it again. Okay, cool. That's the sign-up sheet. Um, ends like on the 9th or the 10th, depending on where you are. Yeah. Uh, East Coast, uh, 8pm on the Monday night. If you're in the UK, 1pm in the evening on the uh, on the 10th. 1pm? Oh, 1pm in the morning, evening. 0100 military time. I think, uh, I think the plan is to have draws on Wednesday the 11th. Uh, they are 
Te technically, yes, uh, it's Wednesday at midnight in the UK, I believe. <laughs> Again, got got to love it. I uh, linked the uh, Discord for where the tournament's being run out of as well, so feel free to join that, even if you just want to keep up to date with when the races happen, even if you don't necessarily want to take part. Yeah, there should be a bigger prize pool because there's already been, already been a big donation from PSR TV. First yeah. place will not be $35 this time around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all skill levels are welcome. Yeah, we've had people without PBs join before and have fun, so. If you happen to want to help out on tech, uh, just let me know. I do think that's much needed, long uh, category. But yeah, I think with that, I think that is everything now, right? Should be, yeah. Uh, cool. Just indeterminate podcast time, just so you yeah. know. Tentati uh, tentatively, 4th of November, at the usual time um, of 8pm UK, 3pm US, Eastern. Um, but yeah, other than, that, I, other than that though, I hope you all have a good rest of your day, um, or evening, or morning, uh, wherever you are. Take care. Bye.